Welcome to our presentation on DNA replication. We learned in the last unit what DNA is. And now we're going to see how strands of DNA can replicate or copy themselves exactly without any errors. Any chance of errors, in fact. This diagram shows the process of DNA replication. What, if you recall, we said a DNA uh, shape was like a twisted ladder. If you untwist the ladder, if you untwisted the twisted ladder, put it up against a building, and right down the middle cut, did away with the hydrogen bonds between the bases, the sides would open up and have some space. So we'd have two half ladders. If we then brought in little pieces of ladder, nucleotides in this case, and glued them back into place on both of the half ladders, eventually all the rungs would be done and matched up and we would have two identical ladders. That's an analogy for what goes on with DNA replication. This goes on until the whole ladder or the whole DNA molecule is copied, replicated. Why, why must DNA replicate? Well, when cells divide, each cell, the control mechanism of the cell from the nucleus is the DNA. So it must have, if it's going to be that kind of a cell, it's going to be a skin cell, a hair cell, it must have the exact copy of the DNA in both cells. So we go from one cell to two. It's, it's incredibly important that we have two identical strands of DNA. Why must cells divide? Cells divide when they grow too large to efficiently move food in and waste out and function. Cells divide when they grow old, uh, get worn out. The soles of our feet and palms of our hands are being shed and replaced. Test intestines are producing millions of uh, cells each second. Um, just your old, your skin cell uh, sloughs off every, I can't remember exactly, but something like every so many weeks you produce all new sk outer skin cells. DNA replication begins with a complete strand of DNA. Here we have the model on the left and we can have we see that in the middle there under the word DNA there's sort of the spiral staircase twisted CGTA and then next to it we've kind of untwisted that part and we see again remember the triple bonds between C and G and the double bonds the double hydrogen bonds between a and T uh, make them unique and also we have to have the two ring one ring set up or it won't work the spacing won't be right so no matter what goes in if there's um, an A opening we need we can only put a T in there for bonding and size reasons what breaks those hydrogen bonds initially between the bases it's an enzyme called helicase it um, attaches to the strand on, on command of the DNA when it knows, it knows it needs to replicate. This helicase will be brought in. It's an enzyme and it starts to break the hydrogen bonds between bases and unzips the ladder. Probably will occur at more than one point uh, because there are millions and millions of strands. Um, where this happens at many places probably but at any site it's called a replication fork because it opens up. It opens up and creates space between the bonds, the bases. And you can see here we've opened up uh, down below or they're still attached up above. There's strand uh, number one, strand number two, uh, and then, then a different enzyme called DNA polymerase is going to bring in free nucleotides. Remember a nucleotide is a phosphate sugar base, phosphate sugar base. And if we looked at the very bottom of this ladder here, we have a G on one side and a C on the other. DNA polymerase can only bring in a C to the left side and a G to the right side, because that's all that would fit in that space and triple bond up. The DNA polymerase super glues the nucleotides together with covalent bonds between the phosphate sugars, phosphate sugars, phosphate sugars, and the bonds between the bases are hydrogen bonds. So they will hook back up eventually as well. The hydrogen bonds between the A and the T double and C and the G triple, but along the sides of the ladder those are covalent bonds. 
much stronger than the hydrogen bonds. After completing the new strand, the cells will completely divide, mitosis, and the result will be two identical cells with two identical copies. You can see here we have, the, it would be millions and millions of rungs or, or ba uh, base pairs more, but what we're looking at here is on the far left, the old strand and new strand, and then a new strand number two and the old strand number one. So when they unzip, all it's like again, the latter cut down the middle, separated against a wall, and if somebody came in and started gluing a base and a little bit of a side and a ba base and a little bit of a side to each rung before too long, if you kept at it, the single ladder which was cut in two into two half ladders would now be fixed up and be two completely identical ladders leaning against the building. Same thing with the DNA. The C's and G's and A's and T's are the rungs of the ladder and the phosphates and the sugars are the sides. If you just take a look at if this were an original short strand of DNA, of course again DNA is millions and millions of these nucleotides long. This We don't have time to do millions and millions so we'll just look at this little short section here. If this were separated and what would the new strand look like? The, the, the two new strands look like? We can see that the original is in white and the new nucleotides are in uh, red. And of course the A has to match with T, the G has to match with C. I'm looking at the top row here, top strand. And these, are, these would end up being two identical unconnected strands of DNA. There would be no connections between the red nucleotides. You would have the lower strand of DNA and the upper strand of DNA which ultimately would be separated during mitosis to two separate cells.